Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. It's Wednesday, May 4th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Missouri's candidates for Congress are running in the dark thanks to a redistricting impasse among members of the state legislature. And I have spoken to people who have been in the building longer than I, been around 20, 30 years, and they have said this is the most dysfunction they've ever seen. Coming up, St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum explains why candidates and election officials are concerned about the redistricting uncertainty. Abortion rights advocates are hitting the streets of St. Louis following the leak of a draft U.S. Supreme Court opinion that would overturn Roe v. Wade. Our body, our choice, no sexist court can take our voice. Our body, our choice, no sexist court can take our voice. Our body, Hundreds of demonstrators gathered last night outside the Eagleton Courthouse in downtown St. Louis. The protesting comes as abortion rights supporters say overturning the landmark decision would endanger women in Missouri and other states. St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports. In a draft opinion published by Politico, a majority of justices said they would overturn Roe v. Wade and uphold a Mississippi law that would ban most abortions there. The expected decision would leave abortion up to state legislatures. Abortion is expected to remain legal in Illinois. MLC Rodriguez is president and CEO of Planned Parenthood of the St. Louis region. She says overturning Roe would cause a ripple effect of anti-abortion bills throughout the country. So if the Supreme Court completely reverses the protections enshrined in Roe versus Wade, what we are going to see is the floodgates will be open and states will quickly move to ban abortion. The Supreme Court's decision is expected this summer. I'm Chad Davis, St. Louis Public Radio. In other news, St. Louis County voters could be voting on another change to the county charter in August. The council has advanced a ballot measure that would restrict appointees in acting roles who have not received council approval to 60 days. Republican Councilman Tim Fitch says the move is necessary because County Executive Sam Page has left numerous acting appointees in place for months. Until this county executive, this legislative body's decisions on confirming appointees has been respected. Sam Page has now decided that confirmation doesn't really mean confirmation. The ballot measure needs final approval from the council before going to voters. Caps limiting the number of medical marijuana facilities in Missouri are legal. Dan Margulies has more on the decision from the Missouri Court of Appeals. The court upheld a Cole County judge's decision dismissing a challenge to the caps and finding them legal under the Missouri Constitution. The challenge was brought by several businesses that had unsuccessfully applied for licenses to cultivate, manufacture, or dispense medical marijuana. They argued the limits were arbitrary. In 2018, Missouri voters approved an amendment to the state constitution legalizing medical marijuana. The amendment authorized the Department of Health and Senior Services to regulate the program. The appeals court ruling means that cultivation facilities remain capped at 60, manufacturing facilities at 86, and dispensaries at 192. I'm Dan Margulies. A Missouri man who killed a couple during a robbery at their rural home more than 25 years ago has been put to death. Carmen Deck was executed yesterday at the state prison in Bon Terre. He's the fifth person to be executed this year in the U.S. That includes two people in Oklahoma, one in Texas, another in Alabama. In Tennessee, Governor Bill Lee paused executions this week to enable a review of lethal injection procedures after that state was forced to call off an execution last month. Missouri's congressional candidates still don't know the districts they would be representing after this year's election. That's because a redistricting impasse among members of the Missouri legislature has not produced a map with new congressional lines. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports. Ben Samuels has done just about everything he's needed to do to run for Congress. The Democrat hoping to represent Missouri's 2nd District raised money, hired staffers, and has knocked on doors in what's now a decidedly suburban district. There's just one problem, though. Because of a legislative impasse over redistricting, Samuels and other 2nd District contenders have no idea which voters they should be courting. Already in a congressional district, there are 750,000 people who live there, and 
you want to talk to all of them if you can. And when you don't know what the district lines look like, there's even more people you want to be talking to at this stage. There are a lot of reasons why Missouri lawmakers are at loggerheads over how to reconfigure the state's eight congressional districts. But the big conflict involves what to put in the second district, which includes a portion of the St. Louis metro area. State Representative Trish Gunby, who is one of three Democratic second district contenders, has had a front row seat to the impasse. It's like nothing she's ever seen or expected. I started serving during the pandemic. I thought that was going to be the weirdest time. We came back last year, still weird. We thought things would normalize, and I have spoken to people who have been in the building longer than I, been around 20, 30 years, and they have said this is the most dysfunction they've ever seen. That dysfunction is not just affecting Democrats. State Representative Sarah Walsh is running for the open 4th District seat, which takes in huge chunks of central and western Missouri. She recently attended an event in Lafayette County where Republicans were gathering, even though there's no guarantee the county will even be in the 4th District. You know, just as is the story of my life, you just work extra hard. So I've been getting out to the counties that are in the current 4th District, that are in the Senate's proposed 4th District, and that are in the House's proposed 4th Congressional District. There have been multiple lawsuits filed over the lack of progress in Missouri congressional redistricting, both in state and federal court. Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft says the Missouri Constitution does not provide state judges with the authority to draw congressional maps. They don't just get to decide we're going to do something we don't have the authority to do. I don't get to decide that I'm suddenly going to be able to pull people over like I'm a highway patrolman. I'm not. While Ashcroft says that federal courts could certainly redraw congressional districts, he pointed to precedent where those judges have abstained from intervening close to an election. Travis Crum of Washington University School of Law says it's highly likely that a court would get involved this time around because using the lines passed in 2011 violates constitutional prohibitions against having districts with uneven populations. Crum says that a panel of federal judges would likely draw a map that's similar to the one currently in place. And the judges might do it themselves. They might hire what's oftentimes called a special master. And the special masters who work on these issues around the country, they oftentimes are able to draw a new congressional district map uh, in a matter of days or weeks. But the timeline before the August 2nd election is making people like Rick Stream quite nervous. Stream is the GOP director for the St. Louis County Board of Elections. The longer it takes to uh, for them to draw a map in the legislature, the more difficult it becomes for us to get uh, all of the precinct splits uh, out so that the candidates and the people know which district they're in. Eric Fay, the Democratic director for the county's election board, also says his agency is staring down at some hard deadlines to prepare for the primary election. That includes a May 24th deadline to put things on the August ballot and a June deadline to send ballots to military personnel. We have to move forward, and whatever the legislature or the court is doing, it may be too late for election administrators to actually effectuate it. I'm really, really excited about the opportunity. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. With uncertainty still looming, Ray Reed is speaking to seniors at a gathering in Brentwood about his bid for the 2nd Congressional District seat. Reed is from the inner ring St. Louis County suburb, so he's hoping the town ends up in the 2nd District. But as of now, the Democratic contender has no clue if the people he spoke to can actually vote for him. But, you know, it's kind of challenging not knowing exactly where your boundaries are. Um, it's also given us more time to just recruit some more young people in this race. Republican incumbent Congresswoman Ann Wagner says she hopes the legislature can come to an agreement before session adjourns on May 13th. She said in a statement that, quote, I am pleased and honored to serve in any district that the Missouri legislature decides to draw. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. This has been The Gateway.
Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.